Hello, my name is Joe Hoyle, and I am the president of CPA Review for Free. And I want to work with you today on a question about bonds payable. If you're taking the financial accounting reporting part of the CPA exam, or possibly if you're taking intermediate accounting, working to be able to do a bond payable question like this is very, very handy. So I want to make sure you understand how the bond payable problem is to be done. Let's begin with just the facts about the problem. In this particular problem that we're going to work, this is a $600,000 serial bond that's being issued on January the 1st of year one. Now a serial bond pays both principal and interest each year. Your home mortgage, for example, is probably a serial payment. Part principal, part interest. In this particular serial bond, its $200,000 face value is being paid every year starting on 1231 year one. So therefore, $200,000 at the end of year one, $200,000 at the end of year two, and $200,000 at the end of year three. In addition, they're paying 12% cash interest every year on the face value at 1231. So the first year, the face value is $600,000, and they'll pay 12%. The second year, the face value is $400,000, and they'll pay 12%. Now, when the company goes out into the market to issue this bond, it is issued to earn a 5% effective rate. Apparently, the interest rates at that time had dropped or were lower. So although they were willing to pay 12%, they were able to issue the bond at only a 5% effective rate. Now, on the CPA exam, or again in intermediate accounting, you face two possible questions. Question one, what is the interest expense for year two? Not year one, but year two. And secondly, the second question is, when you get ready to report your balance sheet at the end of year two, what is the liability balance? Now, on the CPA exam, almost all of these questions use the effective rate method, and we'll show you exactly how the effective rate method is to be done. The preferable method is the effective rate method, and that's why it's done in that way. Now, what we're going to do is to begin by looking at what the cash flows are. I always tell my own students that if you're going to price a bond, the first thing you have to do is to be able to know what the cash flows are. So how much was the face value each year? The face value of this bond, and remember it's a three-year bond, year one, year two, year three. The face value the first year is 600000 because they've not made any payments yet on the bond. At the end of year one, they'll pay 200000 so the face value will then become 400000 It's 600000 during year one and 400000 during year two. And then during year three, it has dropped all the way down to $200,000. So your face value is 600000 400000 200000 The cash interest rate is 12%. So the contract says that you have to pay 12% cash interest each year. So therefore, as far as the interest is concerned, you'll pay $72,000 at the end of year one, 12% of $600,000. You'll pay $48,000 at the end of year two, 12% of $400,000. You'll pay $24,000 at the end of year three, that's 12% of $200,000. Those are your interest payments based on that bond contract. You'll also make a principal payment because, again, it's a serial bond. So you'll pay $200,000 at the end of year one on the principal. You'll pay $200,000 at the end of year two on the principal. And then you'll pay the bond off at the end of year three by paying the final $200,000. So how much do you have to pay in the first year? You pay $72,000 in interest and $200,000 on the principal your cash payment is $272,000. In the second year, you pay $48,000 in interest, $200,000 on the principal, you pay exactly $248,000. And finally, you get the routine now. In the third year, you pay $24,000 in interest and $200,000 in principal, you pay $224,000.
Now, no matter what you sell the bond for, this is the cash payments that you have to make. And the reason is, this is what's on the bond contract. Now, our second step then, once we know these cash flows, is to find the present value. So what were our cash flows? Well, in year one, the cash flow is $272,000. In year two, the cash flow is $248,000. And in year three, the cash flow is $224,000. We've got to find the present value conversion rate. And what this does, what present value does, is to take the interest out of the cash flows so that you know what the cash flows are worth right now today without that interest in. You're going to take the interest out. Now, what was the rate? They sold the bond at a 5% rate. That was the effective rate. That's what you're going to pull out of the bond. This is three separate single amounts. This is not an annuity because the amounts here are different amounts from first year to second year to third year. So therefore, the first one will be an N equals 1, because that 272 is in one year. The second one will be an N equals 2, because that's paid two years from now. And of course, the third payment is an N equals 3, because that's paid in exactly three years from now. So I've gone to the conversion tables, and I've looked the conversion tables up for a 5% single amount of one period, two periods, and then three periods, and I found 952 for one period. I found 907 for the second period, and I found 8.864 for the third period. This takes out the interest to give you the present value, and that comes back to be, and you can check this math, I'll do it real quickly, 258,944 for the first amount, 224,936 for the second amount, and 193,536 for the third amount. Total up the three present values and you get $677,416. That's what you're going to pay, what you're going to issue the bond for. If you issue this bond at $677,416, then what you've done is to take the 12% cash rate and reduce it down to an effective rate of 5%. You've taken the cash flows, you've backed out that 5%, and you've got the $677,416. Now, when I do pre a book value or bonds payable, I like to do the journal entries. I like to be able to see those journal entries. So let's go ahead and work this as a journal entry question. First thing that happens on January the 1st, year 1, is that we issue the bond. We get cash of $677,416, as we already know, and we credit bonds payable for $677,416. Now, I know that some textbooks will do this with a face value and a premium account. I just think it's so much simpler to simply credit the bonds payable for $677,416 and not try to set up a discount or premium account. It's the same thing either way, and I think this is easier. We get to 1231 of year one. Now, I like to do this in a very careful sequence. The first thing that happens on 1231 year one is that we pay the interest for that year. And remember from the first slide, the interest expense that we pay, this is the, what I call the cash entry. The interest expense that we pay is $72,000. And we actually do pay that cash, $72,000. Now, that's perfect. That happened. But the problem is, that was a 12% rate. And no one would buy that, or we didn't negotiate 12%. We negotiated this bond to have a rate of 5%. So if the accounting is going to be properly presented, we have to take that 12% rate, and we have to reduce it to 5%. You cannot do that unless you know what 5% is. So take the principal. The principal is $677,416. That was the principal for that year. So take that times 5%. And when you do that, 5% of $677,416 is 
is $33,871. That's 5%. That's what you want the number to be. But they didn't pay $33,871. They paid $72,000. So what we've got to do is to reduce the $72,000 to $33,981. And that means we're going to have to move the expense down by $38,000. 129. That reduction, that reduction right there gets you from a 12% rate to the 5% rate. So we'll come over here and we'll credit interest expense for 38,129. That brings the expense down to 5%. That's what you want. What's the debit? Well, anytime you make this adjusting entry for the interest expense, you're always going to change the bonds payable. If you have sold the bond at a premium, which we did here, you'll bring it down. If you sold the bond at a discount, you'll bring it up. It's always going to move toward the face value. Since we sold it at a premium, we're going to reduce the bond payable by $38,129. We've done two things. We've reduced the interest expense to 5%, and we've moved the bond payable toward the face value. Then, of course, we make one other payment. We debit bonds payable for the $200,000, and we credit cash, because they do make a serial payment of $200,000 at that time. Before we move on to year two, we need to know the bond payable account now. Remember, it was originally $677,416. We've reduced it by $38,129 in making the interest expense entry. And we've reduced it by $200,000 because we made a payment. So the bond payable principal account now, at the end of year one, is no longer $677,000. It's now $400,000 and 39,287 that payment will change or that balance will change like that great now let's finish this problem off by doing year number two it starts the same way they make the first payment and this time it's year two so they pay forty eight thousand dollars so we'll debit interest expense for forty eight thousand and we'll credit cash for forty eight thousand but now that's the 12% figure. You want it to be 5%. So take the balance at the end of the first year or the beginning of the second year, which we've now computed to be $439,287. We want to know what 5% of that number is, and 5% of that number is 21,964. We have to bring the 48,000 down to 21,964. That's an adjustment or a reduction of $26,036. That's always our second entry. We're going to credit interest expense for $26,036, and that makes that 5%. We also have to reduce the bond payable because we're moving it toward the face value. We'll debit that for $26,036. Cash entry first, and then get the interest correct with the second entry. We make one more $200,000 payment, so we'll debit bonds payable for $200,000 and credit cash for $200,000. You get into the process with these bonds, and you do the same thing basically over and over. Question one asks, how much is interest expense in the second year? Interest expense in the second year is $21,964, which is the 5% of the principal balance. Question two says, what is the bond payable on the balance sheet at the end of year two? It was $439,287. We reduced it right here by $26,036 to get the interest correct, and we reduced it right here by $200,000 because of the payment, that gives you a final bond payable balance at the end of the second year of 213251 Not easy question, but it's a question that you can do. And I tell you, if you can do a question like this, you can make an A.